Good evening. This week we will look at some of the technologies that are improving business to business transactions, uh, some of the history of these technologies and where we are today. How businesses use uh, the internet to uh, improve uh, purchasing, logistics, and other support activities, um, how the internet facilitates implementation of outsourcing and offshoring business strategies, and how electronic uh, data interchange works, and how it evolved using internet technologies. We'll also talk about supply chain management and how uh, businesses are using internet technologies to improve it and all of this makes business to business transactions easier and more efficient. <coughs> so let's uh, take a look at outsourcing and offshoring. Uh, just the definitions. Uh, outsourcing is using other organizations to perform specific activities and it's typically used in manufacturing. Offshoring is outsourcing done by an organization in other countries. Um, business process offshoring includes purchasing, research and development, record keeping, and information management. Um, impact sourcing, also known as smart sourcing, is offshoring done uh, by not-for-profit organizations. <clears throat> so purchasing activities, um, some of them include the identification and evaluation of vendors, uh, selecting specific products, placing orders, resolving any issues you have after the receipt of the good or service that you purchased. A supply chain is the part of the industry value chain preceding uh, a particular strategic business unit. It includes all the activities undertaken by every predecessor in the value chain to design, produce, promote, market, deliver, and support each individual component of a product or service. Uh, traditionally, purchasing departments buy components at the lowest price possible via bidding. <clears throat> Procurement includes all purchasing activities, uh, monitoring all purchase transactions, and managing and developing supplier relationships. It's also called supply chain management. A procurement staff have high product knowledge to identify and evaluate appropriate sellers. Um, sourcing is identifying suppliers and determining their qualifications. And e-sourcing is the use of internet technologies in sourcing activities. Um, <clears throat> business purchasing processes are more complex than most consumer purchasing processes. Spend is a term that denotes the total yearly dollar amount for goods and services purchased. Managing spend is an important function and can be a key component in overall profitability. The Institute for Supply Management, ISM, is the main organization for procurement professionals. Let's look at the terms uh, direct and indirect materials. Uh, direct materials become part of a finished product. A direct materials purchasing can be one of two types. The first is replenishment purchasing or contract purchasing. And there the company negotiates long-term material contracts. The other type of direct material purchasing is spot purchasing. Purchases are made in loosely organized uh, spot markets. If uh, the demand exceeds the uh, current contracting purchasing estimates, uh, there's probably a need to go to the spot market to make up the difference. 
Indirect materials are all other materials the company purchases. It includes factory supplies and replacement parts for machinery. Maintenance, repair, and operating supplies, also known as MRO supplies, are indirect materials purchased on a recurring basis. Uh, they're standard items or commodities with price as the main criteria. Purchasing cards or P-cards allow managers to make multiple small purchases with cost tracking information sent to procurement. That way you don't have to go through the formal production of a, a purchase requisition and purchase order and all of that. Um, some of the uh, leading suppliers of these materials for uh, MRO, maintenance, repair, and operating, it would be McMaster Car, um, WW Granger, Office Depot, Staples, DigiKey, and Newark.com. Uh, logistics activities have the uh, classic objective to provide the right goods in the right quantities in the right place at the right time. Uh, managing materials, supplies, and finished goods, um, you, you can have third-party logistics providers or 3PLs operate a customer's uh, material movement activities and also the web and the internet are providing an increasing number of opportunities to better manage these activities uh, either if you do them uh, in-house or if you uh, outsource them to an expert uh, agency. There's also the need to purchase business support, uh, business process support activities. Uh, finance and administration, human resources and technology development, um, human resources, payroll, retirement plan servicing are often outsourced by small to mid-sized companies. <clears throat> A common support activity is training. may be uh, handled by HR centrally or by individual departments uh, in a decentralized manner. Knowledge management is another of these business support activities and it's the intentional collection and classification, dissemination of information about a company and its products and processes. Let's look at uh, supply webs. The roots of web technology for business to business transaction lie in a hierarchically structured approach to inter-firm information transfer, electronic data exchange. Uh, the book notes that the trend in purchasing logistics and support activities is the shift from hierarchical structures towards network structures. Uh, procurement departments are being given new tools to negotiate and form uh, strategic alliances. <clears throat> the supply web term is replacing the older term supply chain. Um, with this, parallel lines interconnect to form a web or network configuration as opposed to the old hierarchically structured approach. Uh, finally, uh, the government uh, is getting into the use of uh, automated uh, procurement uh, of some aspects of purchasing uh, with its e-government uh, sites. And e-government is the use of internet technologies by governments and government agencies. It enhances functions uh, performed for stakeholders and uh, also its, bus its own internal business activity operations. Uh, the U.S. Government Financial Management Service, FMS, uses pay.gov to handle uh, payment activities. The Bureau of Public Debt has a Treasury Direct site. Um, other countries also use the Internet for handling payment, uh, pay payment transactions uh, as well. 
and as do U.S. cities and states. Um, and in addition, these sites have information about laws and regulation, uh, regulations, licenses, uh, jobs, and tourism, and much more. USA Jobs is another example. So <clears throat> here we see the steps in a business purchasing process. Uh, identify needs, um, research uh, the web and catalogs and databases, define your requirements. Uh, after you've done that, you can get requests for quotes. Um, you would review those quotes and select a vendor. Um, then it goes through an approval process, and after that, if it's approved, you create a purchase order, uh, send a purchase order to the vendor. Uh, <clears throat> Then uh, you'll arrange for the shipping, uh, you'll perform inspections on the goods or services that were uh, delivered, um, and uh, then the uh, accounting uh, department will check receiving documents against uh, invoice and purchase orders and send uh, process and send payment, and the uh, whole thing will be recorded as transactions in the accounting records. <clears throat> this chart uh, shows a list of various uh, support activities by category. And here we see just a uh, typical uh, e-government portal site. So let's look at uh, the history of this uh, business information interchange. The need uh, to create formal business transaction records began in the late 1800s and early 1900s. By the 1950s, companies were using computers for recording internal transactions. However, information flows between companies were on paper, which was slow, inefficient, uh, redundant, and sometimes unreliable. In the 1960s, businesses with high volume transactions exchanged information on punched cards or magnetic tape. In the 1960s and 1970s, uh, technologies improved and intercompany information could be transferred over telephone lines. <clears throat> uh, information transfer agreements between trading partners increased efficiency, but it wasn't ideal. Um, there was multiple incompatible tra uh, data translation uh, processes, and that limited participation in any one of those systems. Uh, freight and shipping companies joined together in 1968 to create a standardized information set. Uh, they used a computer file uh, transmittable to any uh, freight company that adopted the standard. Uh, benefits were limited to members of industries that created uh, these type of standard setting groups. The full realization of EDI, electronic data interchange, uh, the economies and efficiencies of this required standards for all companies in all industries. <clears throat> so the birth of ADI uh, was begun by the American Standards, uh, National Standards Institute, ANSI, and that's the coordinating body for standards in the U.S. Um, and it had it formed an accredited standards committee X12 or ASC X12 that develops and maintains the EDI standards. A data interchange standards association or DISA is the administrative body coordinating ASC X12 activities. Uh, Transaction sets are names of the record formats for specific business interchanges. Um, EDI for administration, commerce, and transport 
is known as edifact. <clears throat> um, compute, electronic data interchange is computer to computer business information transfer using a standard format. Now the businesses exchanging information are trading partners. Um, EDI compatible firms exchange data in specific standard formats. This is often transaction data, but can include other information related to transactions. Most B2B e-commerce is adapted from EDI or based on EDI principles. The dominant technology for electronic business-to-business -business transactions is EDI. So how it works. Uh, the basic idea is straightforward. Uh, the implementation is more complicated. Uh, let's consider an example and look at how it would be done with a paper-based system and then how we would do it with an EDI. So first we'll go over the paper-based system. <laughs> so here in the paper-based purchasing process Buyer and vendor are not using integrated software for business processes, so each information processing step results in a paper document, both internal to each organization and external in their information interchange. Um, these paper documents must be delivered to departments handling the next step. Um, between companies you have again a paper-based information transfer and that can be mail, courier, or fax. Um, the information flows are shown in this figure. <clears throat> Here we see the EDI purchasing process. The mail service is replaced with an EDI network data communications and paper flows within the buyers and the vendors organizations are replaced with computers running EDI translation software. Uh, the information flows are shown in figure uh, right here and you can see they are much more efficient. So let's uh, look at EDI a little bit more. Um, trading partners can implement the EDI network and EDI translation process in several ways. Uh, each way uses one of two basic approaches. The first is direct connection EDI, and that requires each business to operate its own on-site EDI translator computer. Uh, this is connected uh, directly uh, to the other uh, company's EDI translator computer using leased lines. A few companies use direct connection EDI because dedicated leased lines are expensive. Uh, a company may use a value-added network um, and that's an indirect connection with its EDI trading partners. So with an indirect connection, uh, EDI trading partners use a VAN or value-added network to retrieve EDI formatted messages. Uh, they must install a compatible EDI translator software. Uh, trading partners uh, pass messages through the VAN or value-added network instead of directly connecting computers to each other. Uh, the VAN uh, receives, stores, forwards electronic messages uh, containing EDI transaction sets. <clears throat> the advantages of a VAN, you only need to support one communications protocol and the VAN provides translation between different transaction sets. 
the van performs automatic compliance checking and records message activity in an audit log. This helps establish non-repudiation, the ability to establish that a particular transaction has actually occurred. In the past, costs used to be a disadvantage, but now it's much lower. Uh, the Internet presents low-cost communications media uh, that are used by the VAN services. Um, EDI on the Internet, called Internet EDI, Web EDI, or Open EDI. Um, open EDI because the Internet is an open architect network. Um, as the book noted, uh, EDI Int, Electronic Dinner, Digital Interchange, uh, Internet Integration, is the most common protocol for Internet EDI transaction sets. Um, EDI exchanges are encoded using uh, one of two formats, applicab Applicability Statement 2 or AS2, or Applicability Statement 3 or AS3. Uh, secure electronic receipts are returned to senders for every transaction, which helps establish non-repudiation. Let's look at EDI payments. Uh, an EDI transaction uh, set provides instructions to the trading partner's bank. Um, it creates negotiable instruments, the equivalent uh, electronically of paper checks. Electronic fund transfers, or EFT, is the movement of money from one bank account to another. It's executed using an automated clearinghouse, or ACH, system which is used by service banks to manage accounts with each other. And it's operated by U.S. Federal Reserve banks and also private uh, automated clearinghouses. So here we see a direct connection EDI. And you can see that each uh, organization has a leased line to all the other organizations that it trades with. So that's expensive uh, internally and it also uh, creates the need for a massive amount of data communication lines between all these organizations. Um, here we see uh, indirect connection uh, EDI through a, a value-added network. So, in this case, um, each of the organizations only needs a lease line to the value-added network, and that in turn uh, acts as a clearinghouse to send it to the correct uh, vendor on the other end of the transaction. Let's talk a little bit about supply chain. Um, supply chain management is the job of managing the integration of the company supply management and its logistics activities. Um, across uh, multiple participants uh, in a particular product supply chain, um, it has a goal to achieve higher quality or a lower cost a product at the end of the chain. A value creation in the supply chain. Uh, engaging suppliers in cooperative relationships can lead to uh, better, faster, and cheaper service to customers. Uh, the company goes uh, beyond its own internal limits and creates a new network uh, formed around uh, members of the supply chain. Uh, it uses technology to improve operational uh, efficiency, and uh, this is uh, supply chain competition. It can help <clears throat> uh, implement management techniques. Just in time uh, reduces inventory, and lean production uh, focuses on eliminating waste and unnecessary processes. It was originally developed as a way to reduce cost, 
and now adds benefits to the ultimate consumer. It requires the establishment of long-term relationships with a small number of reliable Tier 1 suppliers. Tier 1 suppliers develop relationships with Tier 2 suppliers who provide components and raw materials. Tier 3 suppliers provide components and raw materials to Tier 2 suppliers. The key element is trust among the supply alliance. Uh, buyers expect annual price reductions, quality improvements from their suppliers at each stage. Ideally, uh, each level of supplier can share the benefits of reduced cost and more efficient operations. Key uh, coordination uh, is a consistent production strategy uh, adopted by all supply chain uh, participants. Once a competitive advantage is achieved, such as uh, efficient processing or market responsive flexibility, that's an indicator that you have a successful key coordination effort. A clear communications and quick response are key elements of successful supply chain management. Adaptive supply chain uh, is something that exists when a company uses technology to quickly respond to changes in market demand and in supplier conditions. It leads to higher efficiency, lower costs, and greater profits. Um, using internet and web technologies uh, to manage supply chains can yield increases in efficiency and cooperation throughout the chain. It increases process speed, uh, reduces cost, uh, coordinates design efforts, and increases manufacturing flexibility. It allows response to changes in quantity and the nature of ultimate consumer demand. Uh, using internet technologies, uh, and the book noted Boeing and other firms, uh, to integrate the design, development, construction, testing, and refinement of products is called collaborative commerce. Uh, materials tracking technologies. A challenging task uh, is to track materials as they move from one company to another or even within a company. Optical scanners and barcodes track movement of materials and integration with EDI is now prevalent. This enables uh, the management of inventory flows and forecasting uh, material needs across the supply chain. Real-time location systems, RTLSs, are barcode tracking systems used by fulfillment centers. The second wave of electronic uh, commerce includes new types of tracking, integrated, uh, tracking that's integrated with uh, internet-based materials tracking systems. One of these is radio frequency identification devices, or RFIDs. These are small chips using radio transmissions to track inventory quicker and more accurately than barcodes. Active RFIDs have their own power supply. Passive RFID tags are inexpensive and small and do not need a power source. A goal is to uh, help reduce lost sales from stockouts. Uh, industry observers believe RFID tagging in retail will become widespread in the near future. Um, 
and retailers plan to have them in all locations. Creating an ultimate consumer orientation. One main goal of supply chain management is to help each company focus on meeting the needs of its consumer at the end of the supply chain. This is called ultimate consumer orientation and it's difficult to maintain within a complex supply chain. A Michelin North America pioneered the use of internet technology to go beyond the next step in its value chain. In 1995 it launched an online business initiative Bibnet. This allowed dealer access to tire specifications, inventory status, and promotional information. Saved money for Michelin and gave dealers better service making them more likely to recommend the tires. <clears throat> a major issue in forming uh, supply chain alliances is developing trust. Key elements are continual communication and information sharing. Internet and the web provide excellent ways to communicate and share information and offer new avenues for building trust. Uh, they provide easy, inexpensive contact with customers. They give buyers instant access to sales representatives. And they provide comprehensive information quickly. So here we see uh, a chart that lists the advantages of using internet technologies in supply chain management. Uh, share information, rapid notifications, uh, share specifications, uh, increased speed, reduced cost, fewer errors, um, better coordination, so many, many advantages. Here we see a shipping label with uh, barcoded elements uh, from, in this case, uh, EDI transaction set 856. And that's uh, an advanced ship notification. Here we have a passive uh, RFID tag. And here we see um, the key features of barcodes, passive RFID, and active RFID technologies, where uh, some of them uh, have advantages. You can see, for example, um, the barcode must be visible to read, whereas both RF types of RFID uh, do not. And again, maximum uh, read range is much shorter for barcodes than for passive ID or RFID or active RFID. However, um, barcodes are much cheaper uh, than the other two. Let's finish up with a look at industry marketplaces. Um, the online business marketplaces and portals are vertical portals um, in industry focused hubs. They offer marketplaces and auctions for contact and business transactions. Um, they're a doorway or portal to the internet for industry members. They're vertically integrated. Each hub services just one industry. We also have independent industry marketplaces. The first vertical portals were, change, uh, were trading exchanges focused on a particular industry. Um, with the independent industry marketplaces, um, you again 
focused on a single industry, but with independent exchanges, they're not controlled or established uh, buyers and sellers in the industry. Uh, they're public marketplaces open to new buyers and sellers just entering uh, the industry. Ventro uh, opened its uh, industry marketplace, Chemdex, and it trades in bulk chemicals. By the uh, mid-2000s, more than 2,200 independent exchanges existed. Today, fewer than 100 industry marketplaces are still operating um, due to the lack of profitability. By 2010, various forms of business-to-business -business marketplace models gradually replaced independent marketplaces. In 2012, Amazon.com launched Amazon Supply that is now part of the Amazon Business Marketplace. And Google followed up after that with Google Shopping for suppliers, which was later folded into its Google Shopping site. A private stores and customer portals. Large established sellers feared industry marketplaces would dilute their negotiating power. Many had already invested heavily in websites they believed would meet their customer needs better. Uh, password protected private stores for major uh, customers with price reductions on some products. Uh, customer portal sites offer private stores along with other services that would be needlessly duplicated in sellers participating in industry marketplaces. A large company uh, marketplaces, um, large companies uh, purchase from relatively small vendors and when that happens they exert power in purchasing negotiations. Um, E-procurement software allows companies to manage purchasing functions directly through their web interface. This automates authorizations, other steps, and usually includes market functions. When uh, industry marketplaces uh, opened for business, uh, these large companies were reluctant to abandon their e-procurement software investment. So they force suppliers to deal with them on their terms rather than negotiate with an industry marketplace. Um, a private company marketplace is a marketplace providing auctions, requests for co uh, quote postings, and other features similar to those of e-procurement software. Many of these sites have expanded to include functions allowing supply chain participants to manage multiple function. Uh, you have manufacturing, tier one and tier two suppliers, distribution centers, transportation, orders, invoicing, and payments. Um, expanded arrangements are called private industrial networks or private trading exchanges. <clears throat> industry uh, consortia uh, sponsored marketplaces. Uh, some companies have strong negotiating positions but not enough power to force suppliers to deal with them through a private company marketplace. Uh, industry consortia sponsored marketplace is a marketplace formed by several large buyers in a particular industry. Uh, characteristics of the uh, five general marketplace forms in business-to-business -business electronic uh, commerce today are shown in the uh, next slide. So here we see that private stores on seller sites, you've got one seller and many buyers, uh, fixed pricing with a few products only, 
Cisco and Dell are examples of that. Then you've got customer portals, a catalog based with fixed pricing. You have a few sellers and many buyers. Then you have independent industry marketplaces. Um, they have many sellers and many buyers. Uh, Chem Connect is an example of that. They also offer auctions and the pricing is dynamic. A consortia sponsored marketplaces have a few buyers and many sellers. Covisant and Exostar are examples of these type of marketplaces and the buyer is in control here and they have fixed pricing. Then you have private company marketplaces one buyer and many sellers. An example of this is Harley-Davidson SupplyNet and sellers bid on major buyers businesses. And we see that uh, as we go further to the left uh, we have seller controlled industries and as we go further to the right we have buyer controlled industries. Well that concludes our lecture for tonight. See you in the forums. Thank you.